I think last time we spoke about amcaffeine and this time we are talking about hyphen and that too with Kriti. So great to be talking to both of you today and thank you for taking out time to talking to Entrepreneur India. No, thank you so much for having me. Our pleasure. So Kriti, uh, congratulations. I'm sure uh, I mean, uh, you must have been excited about the brand completing a year now and the kind of growth the brand has seen over the years. So I'm going to just jump into the conversation more and ask you what got you towards the entrepreneurial side of the business? When was the time you started thinking about becoming an entrepreneur? I mean, honestly, it came up for passion. It's not something that I thought, okay, let's do this now next. Um, I It was in COVID when I really got into skincare. I think because of my profession, I've always been into skincare, but I went really deep into it. I hit my 30 and I was like, I need to start taking care of my skin even better. And uh, I really, I'm an engineer, so I get into bulky khal, I get into the detail of everything. I got into like all sort of ingredients, I started understanding them. And then I found a gap in India in terms of the kind of quality and the products that were there. Um, the really good quality products were just extremely expensive. And, uh, you know, so I just felt like I believed in nature as well as science. And I wanted to create something that would hyphen both. Um, and that's how I met, uh, you know, Tarun and Pep Technologies and their whole team. And uh, we realized that we were on the same page and we were like, let's, let's make it, let's do this. Okay, sure. So Kriti, as an actor, I mean, you have access to the best of products, best of cosmetics, ingredients, skincare. So what was it that you found lacking in those products? Oh, uh, see, for see, I, here, when I was ordering in India, I just couldn't find too many products. Uh, and I felt like some of the products were just extremely expensive. I also like simplifying skincare. So I didn't, I, I, at a point, I felt like I was using five serums, you know, and every, every serum had like one, one ingredient. And I was like, why am I doing this? Why can't I put all of this in a bottle? Um, I was using a moisturizer and a sunscreen where, you know, I wanted both in one. So I actually wanted to hyphen a lot of things, which is why I felt like that was what was missing. Uh, some products focused a lot on nature and natural ingredients. Some products were only, you know, single ingredient, two ingredient, uh, science uh, actives. And I was just not getting the right combination. Um, and I felt like if I'm facing this issue where I can still afford a much higher price, what about that girl who used to sit in Patparganj, you know, what would she be using? And I really wanted to create something for the masses, which I would also be using. You know, I never wanted to create products that just, okay, I'm creating this for you guys, but I'm going to be using something else. I wanted to be using, I wanted to use my own products and create them where I uh, approved the quality, where I approved the ingredients, the efficacy of the products and I could make them available to people at a much more affordable rate. Okay, sure. And you always wanted to go the D2C way. You wanted to start something in the beauty business only. See, again, I, I think it was gradual. It's not like I thought of it before and then beauty came in my head. It was skincare and my obsession with skincare and just like watching 10,000 videos and my mom almost freaking out with the number of products I was trying on myself. Um, so it came from, hey, I'm really obsessed with this. I really like this. And I think I can creatively also, not just give my name, but also creatively give my understanding of skincare, you know? Um, and that's why I went into this sector. And, you know, tomorrow it could be something else as well. Okay, sure. So, Tarun, I'm going to come to you. How did the meeting happen between the two of you? How did that partnership take shape? So, uh, obviously, the partnership had a had a matchmaker. Uh, collective Artist Networks, our friends at Collective Artist Networks, who manages to the, uh, our good friends. And, uh, you know, back then, back in about three years back, we were discussing, you know, at M Caffeine, we have built a large institution. It's, it's going to leverage a lot of stuff while we go forward. But we believe there is a gap in the market. So we made a brand hypothesis. We made a product hypothesis. That this is what we want to create as an architecture. And, you know, one fine day, Dhruv told us that, you know, you should definitely meet Kriti. And when we met Kriti two and a half years back. Incidentally, the blueprint she had for the brand has a, had a 70% intersection. 
So we said independently, we have created two blueprints of the branch and oh, if they're connecting 70%, there is matching of the minds done by data. Now we have to figure out whether, how does Kriti feel for building a large uh, beauty franchise? How do we think about building a uh, business and brand, et cetera. And the meeting was scheduled for about an hour. It went for about five hours. And that's where we, I mean, all of us knew that we we're going to uh, launch a joint venture and uh, leverage leverage what we have built at M Caffeine and uh, uh, Kriti's passion uh, to kind of build hyphen. That's how, that's how largely the meeting went. And uh, you are clearly seeing the results of a very, very uh, it, 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 a great partnership, right? 100 crores in 12 months is not, is a very, very ambitious target to achieve. You know, it's funny because this meeting that he's talking about, like where he met you for, for the first time to talk uh -huh. about this collaboration happened, uh, I think a year or maybe two years before Hyphen came out on my birthday. Yeah. You know, and they uh -huh. called me, we have a birthday present for you and mm -hmm. you must meet these guys because I think you guys will sink. Um, and uh, I when Dhruv uh, and Vijay, I think, went to meet uh, Tarun, I had sent them a long message of what products and what ingredients I want to hyphen, you know. And I, I don't think Vijay or Dhruv understood that message. <laughs> and they showed it to Tarun. And they were like, you know, this is what she sent and this is what she wants to do. So I don't think that is expected of an actor. And, uh, you know, when I met them, they're also a bunch of engineers. So I think we kind of also really bonded on that and the engineering mind and the buddhi that it is. Um, so, yeah, I think it was just very organic. Yeah. And Kriti, I mean, now you look at the journey of last one year, I mean, what were the things, I mean, uh, it opened you up to, I mean, of course, you use your engineer's mind also. So after becoming an entrepreneur, what were those qualities you think which you have acquired now? Um, well, I think uh, Tarun and Vishali particularly have taught me a lot when it comes to the market, you know, and, and how the customer is reacting to every product and every, and uh, what is the amount that they're actually wanting to spend on certain categories and certain products. So obviously meeting me in the beginning, I was like, no, you know, I want the product to look like bougie and this and that. But then I realized that we need to sort of cater to the audiences and what they want to spend and what their uh, you know pocket size is when it comes to a certain category. Um, and then I slowly sort of realized that the product is actually the celebrity. So I'd rather spend on the quality of the product and the ingredients that are going into it rather than the outer packaging of it. Of course, we're still going to stick to uh, you know the vibe of hyphen, which is like this fun neon colorful vibe. But at the same time, uh, if a product like a retinal reset serum that we have, um, retinal is a slightly more expensive ingredient. And if I want a higher percentage of it, my price would go up. And then I have to make sure that I'm still catering to that audience. And I bring down yeah. the price where I can, which doesn't affect the product. You know, So I think that balance has been a bit of a learning for me. Uh, which which I've slowly understood that, you know, okay, you may want something, but actually the product, uh, the customer wants something else. So you've got to sink in with the customer and balance it at the level. Sure. And Tarun, I also want to understand from you, I mean, when both of you worked on the product, of course, quality is one part and the kind of ingredients you want in it. But uh, these days we all see that uh, celebrity-led skincare brands, they're pretty expensive and... Uh, Hyphen, on the other hand, is affordable for everyone. So how did you ensure that? So uh, I think right from day one, Punita, we were very clear on uh, what the six Ps of the business would be. I mean, the proposition, as Kriti has mentioned, that it's nature plus science, right? You need to give the power of nature potency of science because science can scare you. Nature can, you know, you have to build that confidence uh, on the ways which are coming. So from a proposition standpoint, we were very clear, but... In India, sadly, you know, uh, while boardrooms have a lot of intelligence uh, while creating the brand, consumers typically go out of the window over time in the process, right? So we typically, I and mean, uh, notionally, what we do in our meetings is uh, seat khali rehti hai. That's for the consumer. Because at the end of the day, consumer cannot leave the room. So when you think about a proposition, you have created a great proposition. But if you have priced it at 1000 rupees for a serum, India is not deep enough, right? So you need to price it really well. Pricing cannot come by who's the co-founder. 
pricing has to come from the customer, right? Because at the end of the day, if you build the pyramid, at the top, you have the luxury brands. In the middle, you have the mass teach brands. And mm -hmm. at the bottom, you have mass brands. Now, at the end of the day, this is the consumer cohort, not the founder cohort. So whenever you think about a proposition for the product in the packaging, you'll have to rightly price it from a consumer lens. We are very clear, mass premium is what we will keep. Uh, uh, we are competing in a market which is cutthroat competitive. And if you are giving a high quality product, it has to be affordable. Otherwise, you know, a badly priced product is a great painting in a garage. Uh, a rightly priced <laughs> product uh, is a great painting in your uh, in your whatever living room bedroom. So we are very, very conscious that uh, we need to keep the consumer at the center. Right? And, and as Kriti was saying that, you know, uh, we all are uh, students of consumers. So when you think from that lens, pricing is very clear. We are not mass because we are not general trade kind of a brand because we are digital first, D2C first. Neither we are luxury because uh, at the end of the day, that, that market in India is close to about 1.2 crore people. So mass premium is what the bulk of the market is, 11, 12 crore people. And you can build a sizable 1,000 crore brand into it. And hence the pricing decision. So according to you, I mean... Uh... Given today's time when social media, of course, is very, very prominent and it rules all our lives, it has become easier to, I mean, uh, to change our brand strategy also and build our product likewise based on what the consumer wants. Absolutely, you use it the right way. I mean, social media, of course, is uh, a, a huge way of reaching out to people, but it's also a clutter. There's also a lot of noise. So you also have to use social media in the correct way. And I and I believe, like, I always like being just real and authentic and organic. And I'm like, don't make me do things which look like an ad. Because uh -huh. that's not the... I'm saying this because I genuinely mean it. So let me mean it, you know. And it'll reach the consumer. So I feel, yeah, I mean, uh, being the CCO for me, the biggest kind of feedback does come from social media, from the DMs, you know, from... I, I actually go on Hyphen's page on, you know, their tagged section and see yeah. all the consumer videos and what they've reviewed the products and what they feel about the product. And then we get back and we kind of also sort of reformulate certain products to get the newer version of it out. Tarun, as per you also, social media has been the best form of marketing for the brand so far. Yes, I think for digital brands, uh, social media is the discovery engine. While in the last 12 years, uh, distribution has been set up by likes of Amazon, Flipkart, and, uh, Nike. Uh, for us, uh, I mean, when you plot discovery and distribution, I think D2C becomes the most powerful tool. Because right there, you're discovering the brand and right there, you're distributing the brands across 20,000 pin codes, right? Yeah. Uh, so for us, D2C is the key. Social media is an enabler of D2C. While we do everything, D in D2C is data. So when Priti puts up a post or a story that, hey, these are four of, four of my options for the next launch, what should I do? Yeah. That's a data point. When people tell us that, you know, out of 10,000 odd comments, 8,000 comments are on pricing, that you have priced it so well. That's a data point for us. So social media is an enabler of whether it's marketing, R&D, consumer feedback, distribution, so on and so forth. But all we all we try to see is a lot of data points on which we keep on crunching modeling and take the best possible decisions we can take for consumers. Sure. Prithi, talking about your entrepreneurial journey, I mean, are there any new aspects which you learned? I mean, whether it's about finance, it's about people management or anything else which you want to highlight? Uh, crisis issues, <laughs> which I think I'm slowly realizing. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, some printing on some product has not happened right. What do you do last minute? You can't like just, there are products that have been created. You can't just put them aside. There is a launch which is said you have to, you know, adhere to the date. What do you do? So I think crisis management is something that I have learned. I'm someone who is a bit of a control freak and I want everything to happen perfectly. But sometimes there are situations where you can't, like, you have to sort of understand what the scenario is and do the best for the brand and the product. So, any anecdote you remember? Any incident you want to share? Anything you remember, Karen, of any of the crisis management situations that we've gone through? 
since we have only 40 minutes for the interview kam pad jayega time there are so many right so when she just said printing on a bottle uh uh some name not clicking and when as you're closer to the launch na i mean uh, startup journey is you know you're at the center of a large hall it's all fire around and you're just trying to navigate out of the out of the hall towards the launch everything goes on fire our production will get delayed uh there would be a truck strike in himachal pradesh so hence product will come late and hence the entire launch plan launch plan of social media will go a wire because it's kriti's handle and it is important to use that as an institution you need to have discipline to agar aapne 18 tarikh ko you have planned something but the stuff is not there crisis of all degrees across all verticals uh, keeps on happening on our group and our group becomes the most active at 11 o'clock in the night because that's where we get free after a shooting and uh, i sleep at 10:30 wake up at 5:30 and then scroll through it that okay this is the day this was the day like now we'll fix it <laughs> but i have to give it uh, that i think we have an amazing team yeah you know i've seen these people sort of um you know just be up all night travel be up for days sometimes you know because we have a product coming out uh to exactly match what is to be done uh we have uh our lip balms have been the best sellers you know the vip lip balms have like really gone viral they've gotten so much love the consumers actually asked for a tinted version of the same and uh we ended up creating that and we were launching that on 18th actually now and i remember when we had to match the color you know the team had to really because i have to do one color but what happens is sometimes when you create a bigger batch the color sort of changes yeah. you know and he actually had to be up all night and they were sending me minute minute uh, you know sort of transitions of the color and then they sent me this is finally matching so they really been working really hard and you know being at it to deliver the best so i'm really really blessed to have them and while sure. they work really we do make sure there is a work life balance guys so Sure. So, Kriti, while we are talking to you, we also want to uh, know. I mean, what made you turn towards becoming a producer, and want to understand more about uh, Blue Butterfly films? Well, honestly, I think uh, in my life, whether it's acting, whether it's entrepreneurship, whether now it's being a producer, everything's come from recognizing a passion that I had and then acting upon it. Um, you know, I I'm an engineer who's done an actor. I realized that I love acting, and I had the potential and i could do it uh when it came to came to skin care also i never really thought of starting a brand i first got obsessed with skin care and mm-hmm. then the idea of a brand came in um i was shooting for mimi and i just was extremely passionate about the film uh not just my part but the film as a whole i have always had a creative bent uh you know creative inclination towards every aspect of filmmaking you know how the set is um how the film is shot um and i really wanted to be a part of certain stories that i feel you know touch my heart and i really get into it um and that's why i decided to start producing um the first butterfly of my blue butterfly films is dopatti which uh, yeah. is coming on Netflix towards the end of this year and i think it's been a fulfilling process i also like being a newcomer once in a while because you kind of you know wanna be like okay what next what else can i learn i love like just evolving learning just grasping being okay with not knowing everything and then learning it you know and um it's been a learning journey um i've seen dopati you know as just an idea and a germ uh get into a six pager get into a full 100 pager get into multiple drafts of it and then finally come to life you know and that's been a great journey being involved in the music uh seeing how it's looking um seeing the edit of it and figuring it out and making it better every time um and i think i want to support stories uh that really touch my heart and i feel like they should be made and they say something um and at the same time eventually i, I want to reach i want blue butterfly films to reach a point where i'm not acting in the film and i'm just producing it and there's somebody else probably you know showcasing the part um but uh, it's a long journey it's just started and there's a lot to learn 
And Priti, I mean, uh, since you mentioned that uh, Trulia, you take a lot of feedback from your customers and you also conduct polls. So any particular customer feedback you remember, which helped you in building one, any of your products? So many of them, I feel like, uh, like I said, like, you know, we got the acne range uh, we pre it uh, uh, because the consumers were wanting some products for the acne range. Uh, uh, the lip balms, you know, they wanted tinted versions and we're launching it on 18th, the tinted versions of our lip balms. Um, uh, the, you know, I, I also want to say like, yes, I try all the products and I approve all the products, the quality of them, the texture of every product. Uh, but what happens is there are certain concerns, you know, skin concerns, which I may not have. Like for example, pigmentation. You know, I do have slight pigmentation, but I'm not someone who has deep pigmentation. So when I'm launching a product for pigmentation, for example, I may not be the best person to tell the efficacy of the product. And yeah. hence we do have focus groups and we have, uh, we also took note of certain consumers who were wanting a pigmentation range, you know, and we sort of contacted them and we sent them our pigmentation range way in advance. Once I approved the texture, uh, and the quality of the product, we send them the product for them to use it over a period of month and a half or something so that they could see the efficacy and the before and after results of, you know, the products. And uh, we actually saw that. And then the consu those consumers, we some of them, we got them to actually shoot for the campaign of that range. Wow. It was just a very impromptu call because it just felt right because I just didn't feel right to be the face of pigmentation range because... You know, it just feels like an ad and it's not. These are real customers who've actually used the products and let them be the heroes and the face of the range. Um, so I think we constantly keep taking feedback. We make sure that we're, uh, you know, also sending our products way in advance, a new range that's coming up, especially to certain consumers who've also been loyal, who sort of want a certain category or a certain kind of product. And that really helps. And going forward, Kriti, I mean, uh, are there new segments which you plan to get into, of course, with Hyphen and also as an entrepreneur also, because you have done something in fitness as a producer also, and again, in the beauty space, any new segments you plan to venture into in the coming future? Honestly, yes. I'm just concentrating on the already launched babies of mine. I think they're taking a lot of time of mine. So unless and until something really comes from within where I feel uh, like I feel as passionately for another category that as I do for hiking. Um, I think that will be the only reason why I want something. Currently, I think I'm just, my full focus is here. And uh, I'm really happy with the growth and I'm really happy with the feedback that I've has gotten. And my aim is to see that neon lime green bottle on every shelf. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. So, Tarun, any uh, new segments you want to uh, share with us? which Hyphen plans to get into in terms of future plans. Apart from whatever we have covered, uh, I think we've covered everything from category to channel to consumer. And we, at some point of time, we'll definitely reach out to international markets, but India is a deep market to build a very large brand. Right? Uh, we'll keep our head down and keep on executing till the time goal is achieved. So that's what that's what the only segment we're going to focus on. I think we, we got like sold out some two, three times. Yeah, yeah. This and is the time we no problem. Out. <laughs> so that was a good problem to have so yeah I think uh, that gave us a lot of confidence to do something different and new also okay interesting and I'm sure the brand is further going to grow further and uh, I'm sure it will in future we'll see it as a global brand hope so <laughs> thank you thank you so much Kriti for talking to us and thank you Tarun